All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Oh, I'm gonna drop the playlist actually into the chat, just in case you want a little music to flow to. Okay. Copy and paste. All right, the playlist is in the chat. We are ready to get started. All right, wonderful. Namaste. Go ahead, find a comfortable seat and sit up on anything of your choice. <clears throat> and uh, we have quite a few things we're getting into this evening, so I'll try to keep it uh, simple and sweet and short right now. <laughs> Um, so what's been on my mind lately is probably the obvious, the fact that things are going back to quote unquote normal. Um, over here in New York, we are starting to wine and dine indoors now, even though we still have, uh, what looks like a trailer park of restaurants <laughs> up and down these streets, you know, granted there are definitely some cute ones, but nevertheless, it does kind of reminisce a little bit of a... Of a, of a trailer sort of situation. But that aside, things are changing and we are starting to emerge out of quarantine and fitness centers and yoga centers are now uh, hosting classes live and in person at 33%, Woo, which is pretty awesome. So people now have the option of uh, either continuing their practice virtually this way or now live in person. So whether you come to the studio or you uh, flow vir uh, virtually, you're getting the same thing. It's pretty awesome. Um, so it's all about everyone's comforts. And that being said, because we are moving back into normalcy, and I keep quoting that for a reason, um, because it has been over a year, and I firmly believe that um, Many, if not most of us, have taken new direction and new roots and new perspectives on life. Like I know a lot of people that have pretty much moved out of the city and have moved like to the country or upstate and have made drastic changes in their lives, you know, because they've tapped in and learned about what supports them and what makes them really, truly happy. Now, some of us, might be ready to go back to normal and back to whatever we were doing a year ago, a little bit more than a year ago now. Um, whereas that's all good and fine, no judgment. However, looking back on how life was to how life is and how life could be, are there things that we can change or that we could possibly be more present in, right? So our daily, our day to day, whether we're going to work, having a free day, you know, what have you, it's just everything that you do throughout your day, are we more present now than we were a year ago? And if the answer is yes, then beautiful. Then you're on a path towards happiness and you are super present and super enlightened and everything is great and glorious in your life, right? But the reality is that that's not completely realistic and that we do still face these challenges and we do still face um, falling back into old habits. So what has been on my mind lately is this phrase, uh, remember to remember love. <laughs> and it ties in with another phrase that I really uh, enjoy and has been on my mind lately, which, which goes, um, instead of thinking, I have to do this, <laughs> can we switch up the perspective and switch up our verbiage a little bit and say, rather, I get to do this. Changing the verbiage in such a way that it is positive and forward and not stuck in the past or stuck or drudging about the fact that, oh, I have to do this now. Oh, what a drag. Can we bring a little bit more life and love and present awareness to everything that we do so that then we can bring more joy 
into our lives, right? It doesn't have to be the obvious all the time. Just by being present and saying, hey, I'm doing this for my loved ones, or hey, I'm doing this for myself, or hey, I'm doing this for a betterment. Like if it's for betterment, and it's unconditional on realistic terms that are healthy, right? Can we step into our day and approach it with more love and more kindness and compassion? Prayer to your heart. It's promising that I'd keep it short and sweet. I know that was a mouthful, but just allow the eyes to close. Take a big breath in through the nose. Open the mouth and sigh it away. Another one just like that, big breath in. Open the mouth, big sigh out. Let's breathe in for the sound of three ohms. Inhale. space, the sweet silence, perhaps, con perhaps connecting with an intention that you set for yourself for your practice, something that is rooted around remembering to remember love and who you do it for. Big breath in, big sigh out of the mouth. All right. Let's dive in. First pose is dragon pose. Oh, and must not forget, grab your devices if you are listening to the playlist. We'll hit play, counting down from three, two, <laughs> one, play. Great. Grab your blocks. And the dragon pose is basically a high lunge, or low lunge rather. Any way you need to get into it, the right foot steps forward, left foot is back. You might pick up that back knee to start. Hands are on the blocks, framing your front foot. They can frame or be on the inside of the front foot. It's your choice, it's your practice. When you found that, you lower the back knee down and untuck the toes. Play around with the blocks, see what feels most comfortable and safe and realistic for the body. Beautiful. Close your eyes. Take a big breath in. Maybe a gentle flutter through the lips. Nice. And this is where we'll stay for about two, maybe three minutes. And I'm going to give you the time at the beginning of our practice um, to breathe into the intention that you set. You know, connecting with this idea of maybe there were a few moments today or over the past week or just, just moments in general where you caught yourself huffing and puffing and being like, ugh, ugh, don't want to do this. Why am I always having to do this? You know, like sometimes I'm tired of always being the one to wash the dishes. Ah, oh, why doesn't my husband wash the dishes? <laughs> but little things. And, you know, I remind myself that, well, I do it because one, I have the time. Two, I, lo I love a clean home. And three, it just makes things easier for both of us. And I'm, hap I'm happy to do that. So think about those things. Think about those moments that um, 
you can find a bit more love and patience with when you find yourself being irritated and over it. <laughs> Really nice. Make sure your front knee scales over the front ankle. So Jonathan, heel toe your right foot a little bit more to the right. So that the, yeah, there you go. Perfect, beautiful, yeah. Got my eye on the clock. Continue to connect with your breath. Relaxing your shoulders and releasing any unnecessary tension in the body. Even check in to make sure you aren't holding on to your breath. Free it up. left here. Really nice. Breath in and a gentle sigh out of the mouth. Press your hands into your blocks, hips, reach back, lengthening your front leg. Lift those front toes. You can even walk those blocks, blocks back underneath your shoulders so that your spine is long, heart is lifted. Yeah, nice. Keep reaching those sit bones back, long through the back of the leg. The right arm will reach forward and up towards the sky. It's a gentle twist. Getting into that outer IT band, just hug that outer right hip in towards the center. Press down into that bottom shin and reach up through those top fingers. One more big breath in. Maybe look up at those top fingers. Exhale, circle the arm back behind you, and then back onto your block. Step forward back into that front foot. And then um, I'm gonna show you, cause I found that this transition was really quite interesting that I did earlier. So uh, the next pose that we're going into is a half saddle pose. Just watch in, I'm gonna lengthen the front leg and I'm just gonna watch, I'm gonna walk the blocks back, walk them back until my hips find my heel. And then my hips will slide off of that heel to the right so that that left foot comes right outside of my uh, left hip, right? So the top of the foot is on the ground. And I'll turn around so you can better see what's going on. Mm -hmm. And if you don't like that transition, no worries, just get into it in a way that makes sense for you. <clears throat> now, you can keep the right knee bent to start. Find a nice tall spine. If this is a, enough for you already, then I would stay seated up. If you're ready to take this a little bit deeper, then maybe you take your blocks or anything that you're working with today. Sam, Marta, I know you have a whole bunch of props and bolsters, so that might be more comfortable. Jonathan, we're working with the blocks today. So if you wanna try this and come to recline onto your back, you'll first come to rest on your forearms and seeing if the blocks are close enough for you to lay onto. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
And then you might recline completely and then adjusting the blocks in such a way so that your head is supported. Yeah, that's it. So Jonathan, sit up for one second and take your left foot so it's outside. So maybe lengthen your legs forward, both of them. Yeah, and then lean into the right hip. Swing your left leg around and bring the top of the foot to the ground, just like that. Yeah, so it's a bend in the front, in the left knee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly, exactly, beautiful. Yeah, and slow, yeah, nice, excellent. Now, if that knee comes off the ground, then maybe sit up. You wanna keep that knee planted, that shin planted. Mm-hmm. So this is where we'll be in this half saddle pose. You choose whether to stay upright, if this is enough. Mm -hmm. Maybe you try lowering down on the forearms or completely onto your back. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. When you've found your shape, take a breath in and a flutter out of the lips. Check in with your hips. Make sure they're both pointing up towards the sky and that they're on the same level. No hip is higher than the other. If you find that one hip is higher than the other, then perhaps wedge a blanket or a pillow, something soft, not too thick, and wedge it underneath the seat that needs to um, come as high as the highest hip, if that makes sense. You basically wanna level the hips. Mm -hmm. Nice, a minute and a half left. If you aren't listening to music during the flow, then maybe uh, connect with the breath. Let the breath be the music for you. Half a minute left.
take a final breath in in this half saddle pose and a breath out of the mouth. If you are reclined, step your right foot to the ground. Use your hands, chin into chest, roll up to sit. And then swing both legs out long in front of you. You can either just find stillness here and receive the changes, or you can step the feet to the ground, maybe some windshield wipers. Maybe you just shake out the legs. Maybe that feels good. Maybe you pat them down. Sometimes I just need to, need to pat myself down and I don't want to move and I just need a nice little pat, pat, pat. <laughs> All right, and then we will make our way over to the left side. Starting from the top, half dragon with the left foot forward. Taking whatever arm variation you took the first time, either framing the blocks around your front foot or taking both blocks on the inside of the front foot. So inside or framing, two choices. Hmm. You get all sorts of long through the back of the leg, and then you lower the knee down. Find your expression of the pose and allow yourself to settle in, closing the eyes, finding a breath in through the nose, and a flutter out of the lips. <sighs> And if those blocks feel far away, remember you can adjust them and make them taller. You can take them to the highest setting so that you aren't rounding forward. There's more space in the front of the hip, more space for the belly to breathe, as well as more space for the heart to open. All right, so we're sitting up nice and tall lunging the left knee forward and melting the hips forward and down. Right, allowing gravity to take course. Anytime you feel called uh, to extinguish any stagnant energy, stagnant breath by sighing out of the mouth, fluttering through the lips, explore different ways of release by using your voice, maybe even humming. And I think when I say, you know, use your voice, I think what I really mean is use your breath, explore your breath. And uh, in those sighs out, it might get audible, right? Don't hold back. Let, your, let yourself heal in the ways that it needs to heal. Let yourself express in the way that it needs to express. And you might not even be prepared for the sounds that come out. Just let them come out. <laughs> no judgment, it's just healing. <sighs> Half a minute left here. See where you can go, see where you can take yourself, or how you can soften. <sighs> Final breath in for your dragon pose. And a breath out of the mouth. Press your hands into your blocks. Shift your hips back. Front leg lengthens. Lift the left toes. Walk the blocks back until they're under your shoulders. And I recommend taking the blocks to the highest setting. That will take out any rounding in the spine. The spine is long, heart is lifted. 
Take your left arm forward and up towards the sky, twisting to the left side of the mat. You'll press down into your bottom hand, press down into that bottom shin. Feel how that automatically lifts you up higher even as you reach through the fingertips. Maybe you look up, big breath in. Exhale, circle the arm back behind you, then down to find your block. Shift your weight back forward, it's a low lunge. Up to you if you choose to get into that half saddle pose in that transition that we did before where we slowly come back to sit on the heel. We sit on the heel first, okay? And then we just slide our hips off of that heel, keeping the top of the foot planted, and it's just outside of the hip. The knee points forward. Now, stay upright. If this feels like a lot, stay upright because you're trying to work spaciousness and work through stagnation that might be existing in the knee in the in the ankle basically this whole leg right so if you're feeling a lot my suggestion is to stay upright if you think that you are ready to go and lay back you can go ahead and lay back otherwise be kind and honest with yourself right Hmm. The moment if you start to recline back and your right knee lifts off the ground, that's a clue in that you should not be laying back because then you're pulling at the tendons, you're pulling at the ligaments, you're not stretching anything. You're just putting your body in a compromised position that's not healthy for the body. <laughs> yeah, so not forcing, not forcing. Yeah, that's it, Sam. Mm -hmm. Nice. Take a big breath in. Flutter the lips on the breath out. <laughs> Yeah, that's it, Jonathan. Stay upright. That looks beautiful. Mm -hmm. Healthy knees, right? This pose definitely works, uh, works the knee joint. Helps to create um, more moisture as well as hydration into the joints, right? So... <sighs> Focus on that, right? In order to move back as beautiful as that is, if the energy is locked, if there is a part of the body that is locked and not ready for something, then what sense is it going further into the pose, right? We There's still things that we need to excavate uh, in the earlier stages of the process or of the practice. And even if you're seated upright, let the eyes close. Consider this almost like a half-seated meditation. <laughs> and breathing compassion towards yourself. Honoring your practice and however it shows up. No one's practice looks the same as, the, as another person's. We have to honor our body and the truths of our body and where it is in the moment. A minute left here. so great. 
beautiful, everyone. Half a minute. Stay close to your breath. Big breath in. Flutter your lips on the breath out. <sniffs> if you were reclined on your backs, make sure to step the left foot down. Press your forearms into the ground, chin into chest to help yourself upright. And then we'll all come to lengthen our legs out. Oof. Maybe you just find the stillness. Maybe you give yourself little pitter patters. Yeah, exactly. Or, or uh, windshield wipers. If you do the windshield wipers, make sure the feet are wide, just about as wide as your mat, so that you have space in the hips to go side to side. Yeah, that's it. Jonathan, you need a wider hallway. <laughs> All right. Roll over your shins your ankles come to all fours grab your blocks we're going for full frog pose now let's see i will face let's see i will face it this way so i'm going to take my blocks and i'm going to put them on the medium setting my hands are going to frame the blocks i'm going to tuck my toes under I'm gonna step my right knee and my right foot as wide as my mat, or as wide as there's something soft underneath me, okay? I'm gonna do the same thing with my left knee and my left foot, so that I've now created this nice wide V shape, right, in the inner thighs. I'm gonna untuck my toes and let the inner arches of my feet find the ground, right? So you see how my toes turn outward? Good. Yeah, Jonathan, you might have to turn down the other way, uh, face, like facing the wall. You might need a little more space. And then you have these blocks here. My suggestion is to first lower down onto your forearms and see how that feels. If this is as far as you'd like to go, perhaps take a block to the highest setting and rest your third eye. This is a big hip opener. We've created this kind of box-like shape. Oh, Jonathan, that hallway is too small. <laughs> no worries. No worries. San Marta, you, you dive right in. Jonathan, you're going to come to lay down on your belly. And just take one knee out to the side. So you're doing a half frog, okay? There you go. Nice. Cactus your arms. Left cheek is to the ground, so your gaze is in the same direction as your bent knee. That's it. Nice. And I'll let you know, Jonathan, when to switch legs, since uh, Marta and Sam are in the full frog. Cool. <laughs> And whichever expression of the frog pose that you're in, take a big breath in. And a big sigh out of the mouth. <sighs> hmm. And explore your sound. This is a great pose to really dive in to what it means to create a vocal assist on the body, i.e. humming to yourself. You could hum a song, you could hum nothing, and just let the hums carry you into what feels good.
Marta and Sam, you stay exactly where you are. Jonathan, you're going to come through center, take your third eye down to the ground. Maybe you create a little pillow, one palm on top of the other for your third eye to rest. And then connect the legs so legs meet nice and long. You can shimmy the hips and then take it to the left side or whichever side you took it on. Take it on the opposite now. There you go. And then when you found that half frog, you cactus your arms wide again. Your gaze is in the direction of that bent knee. And since you're arriving, Jonathan, into the second side, take an arriving breath in. And a big sigh out of the mouth. <sighs> you know, honoring each side with the same amount of love and care. And uh, Marta and Sam, if by any chance that you had taken your gaze in one direction, and if you want to change the direction, switching cheeks, you can do that. Or um, if the third eye is on the block, you can stay. Wonderful. Take a big breath in. Flutter out of the lips. Jonathan, you create a little pillow at the center of your mat. Connect your legs. Marta and Sam, use your hands to press yourself upright and keep the weight in the hands as you bring one knee to the center and then the other. Nice. Yeah, taking it slow, taking it easy, gentle, mindful movements. When you're ready, we'll come to sit long ways with our mat. Bring your blocks with you as well as your blankets or pillows or towels, whatever you're working with. And take one of those blankets <clears throat> and uh, wedge it underneath your right knee so that we take out any hyperextension so that breath can flow, blood can flow, prana, which is life force, can flow. We'll take both of our blocks and um, you might have to, you know, shimmy the, the blanket in such a way that it doesn't come out through the, the outer side of that right leg so that there's space for these blocks to rest. You're going to take both of the, your blocks, medium setting, one on top of the other. You might play around with it as well um, for this next one. I'm going to show you first and then you decide what height the blocks need to be on for your practice. The blocks though are generally coming right outside of that right knee. So I'm going to first take a twist, a little twist to the left, kind of looking towards my uh, left side. And I will just start to lean myself over to the right in the direction of that lengthened leg. And I'll bring my right elbow right there onto the blocks. I'll open my hand and I will go to rest my head in my hand. Maybe I'll keep my left hand on my hip. I'll press down to ground. And then I'll circle my arm forward and up and back. And I'll just take a few circles here. Mm -hmm. And then on my last circle, I'll keep reaching the fingers in the direction of the toes. I'll bend that top elbow, finding the other hand, clasping the fingers behind my head. And this is where we'll stay. <laughs> in this funky, relaxed, not so relaxed, 
Janu Sirsasana, this half dragonfly. So we're getting into the hamstrings, we're getting into the hips, as well as the sides of the heart and lungs. Take a breath in here. And a breath out of the mouth. Be gentle with yourself for this one. Mm -hmm. Nice. Let the eyes fall close. And really allow the head to lean into the hands. Trying not to round forward. Instead, we lean back. All right, so our gaze is slightly more lifted forward and slightly up towards the sky, not too high. We don't want to strain the muscles um, in the eyes or the back of the neck. But I guess you can consider this pose <laughs> to be like those days when we're faced with challenges or irritations where we're like, oh, I don't want to do this, or why am I doing this? You know, just that questionable doubt or that irritable doubt or, or um, just the, the frustrations that, that we're faced with. See if, how you can breathe into this, right? Let this be, um, I don't know, like a, a metaphor of a pose for, for, for finding the love in the obstacles, finding, finding the love in the chaos, approaching the chaos with more love, approaching the frustration with more love. This will be the, possibly the, the most challenging pose of our flow. So just remember to remember love. <laughs> Be kind to yourself. Be sure to relax your shoulders. I know they want to hike up and protect but try to, try to soften. Let the belly be buoyant and supple so that when you breathe in, there's a real blossoming of the belly, right? There's a great expansion. You're getting three-dimensional, breathing into the belly, breathing into the side body, and breathing into the back body, right? Breathing into the back of the heart, the back of the ribs and the back of the low lumbar spine. We are more than just one thing. We are more than one dimension. We are capable of so many things. Yoga teaches us to breathe into it and embrace our duality, embrace our multiplicity, dimensionality. <laughs> so good. Breath in. A gentle sigh out. We're slowly going to release the top arm down to the ground. And it's very slow, minimal movement. You slowly round forward, just gradually bringing the head off of that right hand. Right hand can even float down towards the ground and maybe use those hands to slowly walk yourself up to sit upright. Mm. Again, you might stay here in the stillness or left hand comes outside of your left hip. You press down into that left hand, rise up on the left shin. It's a stargazer. You bend back, hips press forward, right arm reaches back behind you. Drop your head, breathe in. On your exhale, sit it back down, hips to heels or hips to the ground. Nice. Oh, then lengthen the left leg out this time. We're coming through center. 
uh, finding a full dragonfly. So go ahead and grab that other pillow or blanket, whatever soft item you're using and prop up underneath the left knee. Whatever you do, make sure it's even, right? Balance. <sighs> and then you'll take your hands to your glutes and you'll just pull the extra flesh uh, back and out from behind you, from underneath, right? So that gets you up a little bit higher on those sit bones. Grab your blocks, take them down the center, any height that works for you. You'll then bow your third eye in towards your blocks. Hands frame the blocks, palms face up. Surrender. Big breath in. And a big sigh out. Nice. Really nice, everyone. Jonathan, if you want, you can maybe take yourself facing the wall if you feel like you could take the legs a little wider. But if you feel comfortable, then, then stay. Just as long as you don't feel boxed in. Nice. That's beautiful. And we have a solid three minutes here, so enjoy this resting forward fold mm. it's a beautiful place to breathe into the back of the heart sending breath and expansion across the back of the shoulders mm. you may even rock your third eye from side to side on the block Massaging the eyebrows, the forehead. Mm. Maybe breathing in through the nose. And then humming on the breath out. Mm. Another one like that, big breath in. And then hum. Mm. Humming high, humming low. Humming in a resonant level or register that feels good. <laughs> and don't worry about what it sounds like ever. No judgment. left here. Mm, yeah, real nice. Go in. Final breath in. Maybe a hum on the breath out. Mm. Use your hands, palms face down into the ground. Slowly walk your hands back towards you to roll up to sit. Ah, really nice. Go ahead and remove the padding out from underneath your right knee only. And then assist it by bending the knee and taking that right foot to the inside of that left thigh. We're going for half dragonfly on the other side now. Setting up just as you did when we were on the right. Taking those blocks outside of the left leg. 
any setting that works for you, but also staying true to the body and, you know, knowing and honoring the fact that not each side is the same, right? So if you think you need more height in your blocks, absolutely do that. We'll first take a gentle twist over to the right. And then our elbow, left elbow, will find the blocks. Boom, right there, easy. And then you'll take your right arm, sweep it forward, up and back, couple circles. Oh, I forgot, you need to rest your head in that hand. Rest your head in that left hand and enjoy these circles of the right arm. Hmm. Breathing in as you circle up and exhale to circle down. One more like that, big breath in. Exhale, circle down. When you breathe in, reach forward towards the toes, bend the top elbow, interlace the hands behind the head. Mm. Oof. And no, each side is not the same. <laughs> My goodness. Mm. Find the softness, close your eyes. Breathing in through the nose. Maybe a flutter out of the lips. <sighs> Any place that feels tense or blocked, just send your breath there. Use your imagination. Use your inner eye. See what the body needs. Hmm. sure to gently lean the head back into those hands so that the front body is more lifted and that we're not rounding or caving or collapsing in. The heart is open and forward. Remembering to remember love. Instead of thinking, I have to do this, think more positive. Be more positive. Live more positive. I get to do this. What a privilege. We have a minute left here. Sometimes just changing up our verbiage from a negative to a positive can bring more encouragement and more fruitfulness to the life, to the soul, to the heart. Mm. Final breath in here. And a gentle breath out of the mouth. Release your top hand, let it float down to the ground, slowly, gently rounding forward, releasing that other hand down to the ground. Mm. Be gentle, slow and kind to come out, sitting up tall. Maybe pausing for a brief moment, staying there. Or if you liked it on the other side, it's a stargazer. Right hand outside of the right hip. Press down, rise up on that right shin. Breathing in, press those hips forward. Drop the head back. As you exhale, round forward. Hips down to the ground. Nice. 
Lengthen both of your legs long. They connect down the center. Clear your space. <sighs> Brief Dandasana. Hands outside of your hips. Just pause there. We're allowing the spine to realign. There's a very deep side bend on both the right and left. And then shift your hips to one side, bend your knees, swing your legs around. We're coming into a child's pose. Again, it's just a brief one. Knees are nice and wide, big toes come to touch. Third eye finds the ground, or if you need a block, take one block underneath your third eye. Let this child's pose be a moment of bowing in to your intention that you set at the beginning of class. Slide your hands towards your knees. Press into your hands, roll up to sit on your heels. Nice. And last pose of the night, heart bench. One of my favorites. Take one block to the highest setting, second block is at the medium setting. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're gonna find the perfect measure when we come to lay back. But it's just a couple inches away, maybe two and a half, three inches. You're gonna step your feet to the ground, bending the knees. Fingers point forward, you're slowly going to lower onto these blocks. Now, you wanna find that medium block in between your shoulders. Not too high, but also not too low. There should be no pinching or discomfort. The tallest block, you'll also grab and wedge right underneath your head, so you're just catching your head. Ah, the feet will widen as wide as your mat, knees knock in together. This is an option for the legs. Second option would be to just lengthen them out. Loosey goosey, just flop it, flop the legs right there on the ground. Ah, while still enjoying this luscious heart opener. Mm. Beautiful. If you've already found your comfortable position, everything feels right, right? Like you can stay here for a minute Take a big breath in and a big sigh out of the mouth. <sighs> your arms are long wide and wide outside your legs, palms face up. Mm. This is the last pose of the night before Shavasana. Breathe into those hearts. Breathe into all that love that lives deeply within you. It's just begging to emerge. Let there be love in everything you do. You move with love. Breathe with love. Act with love. If 
there's ever a moment that love seems to be forgotten in a moment, bring yourself back. Remind yourself. always being realistic and healthy with your boundaries. really be enjoying this heart bench. If that's the case, feel free to stay. Otherwise, you'll remove your blocks and come into Shavasana. Taking the pillows or blankets and wedging them beneath your knees, beneath your thighs, setting yourself up so you're nice and comfortable. Feel your whole back body heavy into the ground. Complete surrender. Even the back of the head is heavy. Let the face be soft. Relaxing your jaw and your eyebrows. Even unhinging the jaw ever so slightly so that the bottom jaw just slowly disconnects from the top, right? Just separating the teeth ever so slightly. So the tongue even relax, relaxes away from the roof of the mouth.
the fingers to the back of the room, toes to the front of the room, reach in opposition, big breath in, and an exhale, let it go. Step your feet to the ground one by one, pull your knees into your chest, and rock over to your left side, your nurturing moon side, your loving side. The side that wants to nurture and care and be sweet. Press yourselves up to sit, keeping your eyes heavy or closed. Prayer at your heart space. And let's close practice with the sound of one ohm. Breathing in. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Peace, peace, peace from me to you. Thank you, y'all.